Hello and welcome back to part 3 of the Tortoise TDS Fully Explained series. In this part we will have a look at the CVLP model, which allows us to calculate a score for each of the generated MEL token sequences that we have generated in part 2 in the last video. And given our input text, we can use the CVLP model to calculate a score that tells us how similar the input text is to a MEL token sequence. And therefore using the CVLP model allows us to only pick the best of the generated MEL token sequences, which we will then further process and generate speech with. And yeah, I would say let's just jump right into it. But before we start, I have great news for you guys. One of you can win this NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, 320 tensor cores and 912 gigabytes a second memory bandwidth. And what do you need to do to win this GPU? First, attend to NVIDIA's 2024 GTC conference and second, send me a screenshot as a proof of attendance. That's it. The GTC conference is happening online and in person. In case you haven't heard about the GTC conference yet, the GTC conference covers a wide range of topics in the field of AI, giving you a great idea of what's coming next in AI. There are more than 600 sessions and people from all major players in the field of AI like Meta, OpenAI, Google DeepMind, NVIDIA or Runway ML will be holding talks and sessions. And personally, I found the what's next in generative AI the fastest stable diffusion in the world, as well as the human-like AI voices, exploring the evolution of voice technology, talks very interesting. And yeah, good luck to everyone and don't miss out on this one. All right, and as I already mentioned, and as we can see here in the overall architecture, the CLVP model gets as an input the text and the generated MEL codes. And then we get for each of those generated MEL token sequences one score using the CLVP model. And to do so, the first thing we need to do is to define the number of MEL token sequences that we would like to further process after evaluating the CLVP scores. And as we saw already in the last video, this is again like a trade-off to not use the diffusion decoder for too many MEL token sequences, but also generate speech for more than one MEL token sequence. So in case we are unlucky and pick a, let's say, bad MEL token sequence, having a variety of four generated speech samples, we should be able to generate at least one or two speech samples that sound good to us. All right, and then as a pre-processing step, we will modify each of the generated MEL token sequences. So we here will iterate over the generated MEL codes or MEL token sequences and invoke the fix autoregressive output function, which we can see here in the tortoise library. We first determine the first index where stop token occurs and the stop token value here is 83. And what's happening then after the first occurring stop token, all the other tokens are overwritten with the value 83. And the last three tokens of the sequence are set to the values 45, 45 and 248, which I'm not entirely sure what the behavior of such tokens is, but what the author has written here is failing to do this padding will produce speech with a harsh end that sounds like blah or similar. And since we want to avoid having such harsh sounds at the end of our speech, we will invoke this method. Then we will repeat our text tokens. So those are not the text embeddings because the CLVP model has its own text embeddings, which are learned during training. So we pass our input text as a sequence of tokens again. And since we have this just as a one dimensional list, we need to repeat it the number of generated mail code sequences times. In our case, this would be the following value, num return sequences. So we will repeat the list of text tokens 16 times, which will be our text input. And then we can already calculate the CLVP scores for all the MEL code sequences using the CLVP model, which we can see here. And as described before, we pass our text inputs, the generated MEL token sequences. And since we don't train the model, we don't need to return the loss, but we only want the calculated scores. And to get an idea of what's going on behind the scenes here, we can have a look at the clip paper, which has pseudocode showing the implementation of the clip model to which the CLVP model is very similar. So we have an image encoder. In our case, that would be an encoder for the MEL codes and a text encoder. For example, the T5 model is pretty popular as a pre-trained text encoder. So we don't even need to train our own text encoder. Then we have two mini batches of first aligned MEL codes and then aligned text. And during training, there was learned a projection of the MEL codes to an embedding as well as a projection for the text 
to an embedding, which is a joint embedding space in which both inputs are projected to. And then we also have a learned temperature parameter. And then we can see here as step one, we extract the feature representations of each modality. Then we will project the features of both modalities to our joint multimodal embedding space and can then compute their scale pairwise cosine similarities. And the scaling factor is a temperature parameter, which is learnable and that we have defined here. And those are our scores because we already defined that we don't want to return the loss, which will be done here. And yeah, what we can do then, given our calculated CLVP scores, we can pick the top K performing or with the highest values. So we have a one dimensional vector containing for each of the generated mode tokens one score. And inside this one dimensional vector, we find the top K highest value, which in our case will be the four highest values and then determine their indices. So having those top K mel codes indices determined, we can then pick the top K performing mel code sequences and as a final result, only further process for generated mel code sequences. And then you might have thought we are already done for this part, but as you can see in the overall architecture, we actually don't pass the generated mel codes to the diffusion decoder, but the latent activations inside our autoregressive transformer. Since we right now only have the MEL tokens, we now have to calculate the latent activations for the four MEL token sequences that we have generated. And this is what we will do now. So here in step eight, we actually go back to our autoregressive model, which technically could be optimized if we would have stored the internal latent representations for all the generated MEL token sequences. But since this would consume a good amount of memory, we will now only calculate the latent representations for the four generated MEL token sequences. But this is definitely, if you have enough memory, a way to optimize the inference time. And yeah, what we now will do is First for our speech conditioning, we will repeat it top K times, so four times, and we'll do the same for our text tokens. So again, we don't pass the text embeddings, but the text tokens, because this time we invoke the autoregressive model in a different order, as you can see here. And since we have four generated MEL token sequences, we need both the speaker conditioning and the text inputs to have the same dimensionality as our generated MEL token sequences, which are four in total. So we have four times speaker conditioning, our text inputs, and then we have the generated MEL token sequences. For these MEL token sequences that we this time know and don't want to generate, we calculate their internal latent activations. So this serves as a more informative input to the diffusion decoder. And then there are two other input parameters, which are the text length and the waveform length. And I checked the code of the autoregressive model. And those are less important because this one is actually internally not used the way we invoke the autoregressive model. And this is technically also obsolete, but the code could even be optimized for the inference model. All right, and before we can use the latent latent representations of the autoregressive model as input for the diffusion decoder. There's only one more pre-processing step here, step nine, in which we will pre-process the intermediate latents for better speech synthesis results. Again, we will iterate through the generated MEL code sequences and depending if the generated MEL code sequence has an occurrence of more than eight COM tokens in a row and COM tokens have the value 83, we will truncate the corresponding GPT latents that we have calculated here. What we're doing, we first get the MEL codes here for index i and here we have a counter for the COM tokens. So we iterate through the generated MEL code sequence and increase our COM tokens counter each time by one if there is a COM token at position j and if not we reset our COM token counter to zero. And if you find that there are more than eight COM tokens in a row we will then truncate the GPT latents at this position. So imagine that 50% of the generated MEL token sequence consists of COM tokens then we don't want our diffusion decoder to generate a lot of silence but we rather want to cut it or truncate the speech there and those eight calm tokens are more like a buffer or as I said it here give the diffusion model some breathing room to terminate the speech so it's not abruptly ending and once we have done this for all the latents of the autoregressive model we then really can use them as an input for our diffusion decoder which you can already see here will be part four and cover it in the next video. Yes, and that's it for part three, in which we saw how we can use the CLVP model to calculate a score for each of the generated MEL token sequences, and this way determine the top four MEL token sequences with the highest score. And for these four sequences, we calculated the latent representation inside the autoregressive model, which we then, in the next video in part four, will use as an input for the diffusion decoder or the diffusion model. And as always, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video in part four, where we will cover the diffusion model. Bye-bye.